Good morning. Early morning. If I look tired, it's because I am. If I sound as if I have a cold, it's because I have. But I just could not stay in bed on a morning like this here. <laughs> so, as you can see, we have beautiful fog, blooming heather, and I have found myself a little tree that really stands out in the fog here. So, going completely simple. Let's not overdo it to begin with here. Straight on composition, have the heather in the bottom, have kind of a line coming in from the top here of the background trees. Tree right in the middle, as I mentioned. F13, ISO 100, gives me a shutter speed of one sixth of a second. It is a beautiful little scene. I also try a few other compositions, one where I just move a couple of meters over there, and then one where I move a little bit here into my background. But depending on which one I choose, all central composition, you'll get to see the final result here. So as you can see, I ended up slightly changing the angle. I do prefer this one because you can see a little bit less of the background sky. And from this angle, I could include a little bit more of the foreground heather. That was as beautiful as the morning it is. There's quite a lot of mosquitoes in the air, which I have to get rid of from time to time. So I come to this other beautiful little composition. It's quite a characteristic little oak tree and I have set up the camera very close to the ground as you can see here with the 50 to 400 and then I'm trying to include some of the heather here in the foreground and that just leads up to the tree. I am however a little bit in doubt about this composition right here because as you can see I have this line where there's no heather at all and it's kind of as if, if I have a foreground and then I have a little bit of a line here that kind of like stops the view up into the tree. But I'll see if I can't turn that a little bit down in Photoshop. Or maybe mingle this composition a little bit more. as to have a little bit more heather foreground. And then not this line here. So I have just come over here with the worst cut in any YouTube video ever. But I've just found a little bit different composition. Where you can see I have these heather foregrounds right here. I'm a little bit low. I'm also going to try this a little bit further up. And because of the angle that's a little bit different and the sun is coming up here, then the light is also a little bit different, a little bit warmer in this scene. But I think this may work a little bit better. I'm not sure. Let's, let's make a comparison afterwards. Although I do prefer the angle of the tree on the left hand photo, there's no doubt in my mind that it's the right hand photo that's the most strong. The foreground just works so much better. First off, I don't have a big thick line that separates the foreground heather from the tree. And with the foreground heather on the right hand photo, you can kind of like bounce with an S curve from one little patch of heather to the next. And this creates a great visual flow up to the tree. It's always interesting when you're in the field and you analyze a scene like this because you kind of know in your gut whenever it works and whenever it doesn't work. But I also know that you guys appreciate that I sometimes show photos that work less good. But I definitely find that I need to compare them to photos that work for you to actually learn something. And of course, if you want to learn much more about composition, be sure to get my two ebooks on exactly that topic. They have minimal text, are super easy to read, have plenty of examples so we get to the point fast. And you can get both of them down in the description of the video here. 
I cover topics such as do you have a subject, visual flow, scale, balance, depth, and so forth. All the different compositional tools you need to improve your landscape photography. So, as I mentioned, I'm quite tired. I literally came home from the Dolomites yesterday. I woke up in the Dolomites yesterday and came home last night. And with this kind of weather here in Denmark, I just have to jump on the opportunity whenever it presents itself. So obviously I had to get out this morning. And in the end, that's like if you want to succeed as a landscape photographer, you have to jump on the opportunities that present itself. Like it, it really is that simple. Get out when you have the chance, when the conditions are as they are, as they are optimal. And oh my God, the sun is coming through now. So it looks really, really pretty. So now that the sun is coming through, I just want to reshoot a composition I shot a few years back, two years back, where I discuss why this time of year is my absolute favorite to photograph. Late summer, before the autumn colors change. And back then, I photographed this composition that I really liked. My only regret was that I photographed it a little bit earlier in the year, so I didn't have the blooming heather that I can now include right here. So, F13, one thirteenth of a second, ISO 100. I'm underexposing it slightly with the exposure compensation, making sure that I keep the highlights. But just look at this here. Like, how beautiful is that? So as you can see here, I also caught a photo of this composition a little bit earlier where the fog was still rather thick. I'm a little bit in doubt about which one I prefer, but let me know down in the comments which one you like. The foggy one or the less foggy one. So besides of course jumping on the opportunities when they present themselves, it's also a little bit about repetition and optimization <laughs> when it comes to your scenes if you want to make them prettier or prettier and get them at the best moment. So I've come back to actually the first composition that I really like, but now that the sun is coming up, it's throwing a little bit of light into the scene. The fog is dissipating ever so slightly. So the scene is actually changing character quite a lot. So as you can see here, the light is coming in, hitting the tree here on the side and there's less fog. It's still exactly the same composition. F13 gives me a speed of one tenth of a second now and then ISO 100 shooting this at 70 millimeter. So that is definitely also one of the important aspects of landscape photography. Mosquitoes, <laughs> they drive me nuts. <laughs> but that is also one of the very important aspects of landscape photography, that is to come back to the same locations and in that way you can like optimize a composition that you've been working on over some time and you can of course also see a whole lot of new things because obviously conditions are different, the angle of the sun is different and yeah the weather is different. I'm tired. Here's a photo. <laughs> So here are again two photos to compare which one do you like the most, the one with more fog or the one with less fog. 
All right, so just look at those sunbeams here in the background. Absolutely beautiful. So I have this big field of heather right here in front, and then I'm photographing towards a tree. So as the sun is coming up, obviously the scene changed quite a lot. And what really caught my eyes was this tree right here. So in this tree, there are a lot of spider webs. It looks really beautiful. And then obviously having the sunbeams coming in, the spider webs being backlit. And then I have this sea of heather in the foreground that can create some depth, some color, some interest. And right now I have a composition that looks like this right here. You can definitely see the cobwebs in the tree and then the sun coming in. I have tried a few different compositions somewhere I center this tree here and somewhere I also focus stack. I'm not sure I'm bothered because apparently it takes more than 15 focus stacked photos. So I think that this composition here is the one I prefer. And that is because just here to the side is like a little tree and I try to avoid that just by leaving it out of the frame. I think this here works extraordinarily well. I will also try and make a horizontal version of this scene. I am not sure, however, if it actually benefits the scene because the spiderwebs in the tree are becoming way smaller, but the sunbeams are becoming way stronger. So as you can see right here, and here is the composition in a horizontal version. You can hardly even see the spiderwebs here in the tree behind, but the sunbeams look extraordinarily good. So I may just take both. So let me hear your thoughts down in the comments. Which one do you prefer, the vertical or the horizontal? Neither of these photos required a whole lot of editing, and that is also a big part of the post process, figuring out how much editing your photos actually need. And if you want to learn more about editing and how I approach it, be sure to enroll in my huge Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post processing course. It is here I give you all my different techniques for editing photos, whether you want to go gung-ho with your editing or you want a little bit more muted or realistic approach to editing. There is a link along with a coupon code where you can get entire $45 off down in the description of this video. Be sure to use it if you want to learn how I edit my photos. So I did think I was done for this morning. However, I just came by this beautiful little intimate composition. So one of my favorite parts of this time of year is that heather and trees and so forth will just be wrapped in this beautiful, beautiful soft cobweb. And the morning dew falls onto the cobweb and then we get these effects here as you saw in the previous photo. So. I came by this little tree right there. And as you can see, if I just go closer, it just looks beautiful when it's backlit like this. So I've tried to find a little composition and having moved back to the camera, you can see my idea here is 
to kind of use the tree obviously as my focal point and then I have the surrounding cobwebs kind of leading up to it. So we have a line coming from the back, from the side, from the front and from lower left. So it's all about the leading lines that leads up to the tree. I hope you enjoyed this video. Can you believe we are about to have a heat wave here in Denmark predicted up to 28 degrees Celsius in the beginning of September? That's ridiculous. If you want to learn even more about composition, be sure to get my two ebooks, link down in the description. If you want to learn how I edit my photos, enroll in my Photoshop course, you can get $45 off via the link and the coupon code down in the description also. Here's the final photo. Thanks for watching.